Hello, ladies and gentlemen, lovely DIY industry. I'm happy to see you again. And this time with a totally new, cool, not only startup, but a really cool company that is actually making something happen that I would call magic. To give you like a small sneak peek, I will show you this one. I'm not sure if you can see that and if you can guess what it is. I hope not because it's so cooler than Jan is going to tell you, which I'm going to introduce you. It's like a packaging. And the cool part about it, it's just disappearing if I want to. So as you know, I want to do with damn plastic a kind of, um, let's say, knowledge part in the DIY industry to show you it's not about damn plastic, it's about damn people. And that's why I want to introduce you just companies that actually make it happen to change the DIY industry and to change every, let's say, human being in their houses with new kind of materials. And this is it, what is today. It's something that was not only like, blow my mind because I think I thought it's, it's actually so easy but on the other part still just like so cool that someone is doing that and I think before I'm gonna tell you what it is the perfect part would be if Jan, Jan Burby from Grown Bio will actually tell you that by yours by himself he will introduce his company as well as show some examples how you can actually and that's the cool part how you as a supplier to the DIY industry or like the, the market itself can grow the own packaging in the basement or at the office or whatever. Jan, welcome. Please introduce yourself. Thank you, Victoria. And uh, well, good afternoon, everybody. Pleased to, uh, to meet you and uh, happy to present from you from actually our factory in uh, the Netherlands where we, we don't make packaging, but we grow packaging. Or in fact, we don't make products, we grow them because behind me, I, have, uh, I show you some examples already there, uh, a, a wine packaging, but next to the wine packaging is the wine cooler. And that's just a wine cooler that you can use on your dining table, put some ice in there, put some uh, water in there, and you'll have a nice cool white wine all evening long. And you can reuse it over and over again. So Jan, today it's all about GIY and not DIY. Is that correct? <laughs> Explain me what GIY yes. means. It is indeed about GIY, grow it yourself. And for that, I would like to share uh, my, uh, my presentation with you um, that I have ready. So let me share my screen. And share. And now you should be able to see a picture um, saying that high quality, elegant packaging, but also good for the planet is possible because that is what we do. Um, and we do that by using what we call mycelium. Mycelium is not the mushroom that you see in this picture. It is the stuff that is below the ground. It is the white stuff that, uh, that is basically the root structure of a fungus. Uh, we don't work with these champignons. Uh, we work with a more exotic mushroom, which gives a very strong mycelium. Um, but in this picture, you see very well that it grows all through the, the soil and it binds the soil together as well. And uh, it is invisible because it's below the soil. So when you walk over the, the forest floor, the mycelium is below that floor, creating sometimes beautiful small mushrooms, but doing much, much more. And I will tell you all about it today. Um, mycelium, first of all, is the cleaner of the world. It eats organic waste. With this example here, something that we have all, all seen ourselves also, when you leave your bread too long in your kitchen, uh, a mold will come onto it and will clean it up because basically that's what it does, it cleans. It's really the recycler of the world. And this uh, material is, is not only cleaning, but also a natural glue. So um, that's what the function that we use. And uh, we have taken the mycelium from the forest into a lab. And into that lab, we have given it something to eat. Um, we've tried coffee, gr coffee grind, we've tried hemp waste, we've tried wood dust, and it all worked. It just grows on every organic method that you give it. And that gave us a next idea because then we decided to create a shape, a certain mold, and put it in there. Um, and I will show you some examples later on in my deck. Um, the funny thing is that this material exists, existed with, for, with us already for many more years, but nobody really knew the functionalities of this, uh, 
this beautiful mycelium. So today, when we are at the uh, at the verge of coming going into a new area era where we live much more sustainably, we are also going to use nature to help us live more sustainably. And we do that by making packaging products like the corner protectors that you see over here, but but with the same molds, or we can make many more different products. We also grow furniture. We also grow building insulation. The nice thing, first of all, is that it is carbon negative. So our mycelium products, our mush mushroom products, we also call them sometimes, have CO2 embedded in the products. Um, if you compare that with styrofoam, that's a completely different story. I will come back to that later in my presentation. But you also see that it is home compostable because this is basically nature. It is a mushroom, it is organic waste. And if you don't need it anymore, give it back to nature. The best thing is to crumble it in small pieces. That's where nature finds it more easy to digest it. But if you leave a bigger piece in nature, it will also compost, but it will take a bit longer. This material is, uh, has many remarkable properties. It is shock absorbent. It, res it resists water. I, I showed you the, the wine cooler behind me. But another thing is it doesn't really burn. It is a fire retardant and that makes it a wonderful material also in the building and construction industry. So growing products with mycelium for packaging for the building world. Um, well, more or less, we can say that this is an alternative to styrofoam, which is a fossil fuel based product, toxic, uh, using very rare uh, raw materials that we can now replace by mycelium and organic waste. And indeed, as I said, it replaces styrofoam. Uh, and we can, uh, and if you would Google mycelium surfboard, you will indeed see that it can be a floating material that you can make a surfboard of it. Something we do not do, we focus on packaging and building stuff. And all of that to prevent that the world will drown in plastic. We've all heard of this, uh, this big floating island of plastic, a lot of styrofoam in there. We can replace it now by a much more healthy material. So what we do is we upcycle, upcycle organic waste by giving it as nutrition to the mycelium. In parallel to that, we create a design a certain shape and that will lead to mushroom packaging and this will all happen in a remarkably short time filling the mold today will start the growth and in five days the product will grow into its shape at day five we will take it out of the mold put it into an oven to kill the mycelium dehydrate the product which makes it 50 percent lighter and at the end of that process seven days later your packaging is ready and also then you can reuse that mold over and over again. So this is the same picture, but a little bit more text. So let me just skip that one because I've already told you. And here in this picture, you see, in fact, um, a real, pre a real uh, presentation of seven days because this uh, picture in the middle is turning whiter and whiter. And that is literally as the mycelium is growing in the course of five days and plus two days for the, uh, the drying of it. And this is what is happening here in our factory every day. And ready, then we pop it out of the mold and we dry it. So here you see some examples, plant pots, completely natural and sustainable, corner protectors, seed starters, or what we call a square planter. The interesting thing of this story is that we can grow ourselves materials with local agricultural waste. And the nice thing about it is that we don't have to go to far places where we dig oil out of the ground. We can just use the waste from our garden or from the local roadside. Uh, as Grown Bio, we have in the meantime already grown roadside signposts that are completely bio-based, protected with a bio-based coating and being, uh, uh, let's say, a, a replacement for metal, plastic, uh, roadside signs. So this is a completely circular product. And the nice thing is it does, and, it, and if some of you have maybe heard of the, the famous 
butterfly, as, it, as the popular word is of the Ellen McCarter Foundation for the Circular Economy. In this butterfly, the shape of the, of the uh, picture has two circles, the green circle, which is called the biological circle, and the blue circle, which is the technical circle. Mycelium products fit in both circles. So as a compostable material, you can give it back to, the, to nature and it will compost, but we could also recycle it to grow our existing mycelia products into new products again. Now, this blue circle is for us at the moment a more theoretical one because recycling materials requires collection of it. Uh, and collection of waste requires transport, which is CO2 emitting. For that reason, for now as Grown Bio, we propose uh, strongly to go for the biological cycle, giving the mycelia products back to nature. Here you see some of the, uh, the packages we have made. Uh, this is actually a packaging of a grow it yourself packaging kit. It's a kit that we, uh, we sell in our shop where people can grow their own packaging. Here is a candle packaging that we've made, another candle packaging that we've made, uh, perfume packaging and the planter pots. The feeling of uh, mycelium products is quite soft. It's a bit like when you stroke uh, an oyster mushroom, very soft but at the same time, quite strong. This uh, mycelium is a patented innovation created by Ecovative in the US. And we as Grown Bio, we hold the European license of Ecovative to make these materials for all countries in Europe. And we already ship to many countries, Germany, France, the UK, and many others. What we see is that the brands that use those uh, mycelium products, like some of the brands that you see behind me, they do it, of course, first of all, because it is the sustainable alternative to plastic packaging, but it's also a way to uplift their, their brand and to differentiate, because this is also so innovative that many people speak about it. It will surprise customers and really comfort people that they have made a, pro a, a good choice also with regards to packaging. How is the process to make a, a, a mycelium product, in this case, packaging? We start with sketching, which is something that you can do yourself as well. We will always make uh, a prototype, which takes uh, around a week or so uh, to do the mold making, and then one week to grow the actual product. After that, when the prototype is approved, we will then uh, start on the industrial mold making, and that will be done with a vacuum formed recycled plastic uh, system. And these molds will be filled over and over again in a weekly process. So here in our factory, we fill the molds on a Monday, we empty them on a Friday, we dry the product on, a, on the weekend, and on the next Monday, we fill the molds again. Mm. I will skip this uh, technical sheet about design limitations. Then some people say, mm -hmm. well, Nice that you can grow a product, but can we put some something, can we do something around it? Well, we have some coatings that make the product survive outdoors, but then the coating is still a bio-based coating. So we will use mineral coatings that can be left in nature, but we also do branding by so-called hot stamping. Um, and another example is that we wrap our products in a so-called seed paper. This is a paper that contains some sort of seed like a vegetable or a plant seed, which means that at the end of its life cycle, you can literally plant the packaging with the seed paper and grow some new flowers again. <clears throat> so I told you this is uh, about the molds. This is an example of these molds just filled. The product is still very brown. Three days later, the product will be white. Sometimes we grow it five days in the mold. Sometimes we grow it three days in the mold and then take it out of the mold if we want to create a very soft skin because the mold will prevent the mushroom from breathing. By taking it out of the mold, the, mold, the, the mycelium product has more oxygen and will create a much softer skin. But if you want a stronger product, we will leave it in the mold. Of course, there is also the question about cost. And uh, I, unfortunately, I have to answer, the question, uh, answer this question by it depends. But in general, we can say that at the moment we are still more expensive than styrofoam. 
When we started the company five years ago, our price ratio to styrofoam was 20, which means that we were 20 times more expensive than styrofoam. Today, we expect that we are six to seven times more expensive. So you see that we are closing the gap. And we also believe that styrofoam will become more expensive in the future because of taxation. Currently working with a team of uh, roughly 10 people, uh, all in this three-day rhythm, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Um, here you see uh, the whole team and me and my partner, my business partner, Arthur. Then I have some frequently asked questions, but I will stop the presentation here, but because I think that's Victoria, you have some questions for me uh, to pose. Indeed, I have a lot of questions actually. And just because you, the last thing that we were talking right now was the price. You said you are about six to seven times more expensive. Is that correct? But what about if we if we calculate the cost, like what what others need to pay for recycling or the transportation of styrofoam or like, for example, in Austria, in my country, we even have to pay like specific taxes if we have more trash. This is something that is actually like not in the supply chain anymore. So actually, if you, if you sum it up, would you still be more expensive or like? Well, um, but it's a very good, uh, good question that you have, because what we see, that's why I have to answer the question by it depends, because in some countries like Germany, Austria, also the Netherlands, we see that there is taxes on waste. If you add that to plastics, and yeah. uh, for example, in the Netherlands for plastics, there is a 70 cents per kilo taxation. That makes the plastic much more expensive. Yes. So from that angle, I think we will soon approach the price of styrofoam. Mm -hmm. But I have to be honest, it is a real commodity. The styrofoam market is huge with enormous amount of businesses. We are just a small yeah. company, uh, but as we grow, we will see our prices coming down. And for that reason, we are now working mainly with the brands that are in the luxury segment. Yeah. Um, and also we are working with brands that have not so big quantities. So if somebody asks me, can you make 2 million packages? It may be complex for me. If I have to make 10,000, then I could probably even compete already because mm -hmm. with styrofoam, the price of molds, aluminum molds is also quite high. And in that case, my, my molds are only 50 or 100 euros per piece. So I can win there as well. But don't you think that styrofoam will be forbidden anyway in the next years because we cannot recycle it because it's everywhere, because it's just like staying forever? Absolutely. And it's not, it's not even what I think, it's what I know. Because we know that there is, for example, in some states in the US, styrofoam food packaging is already forbidden. And we will soon see that happening in Europe as well. Yeah, I I mean, from the first July now in the Europe is ever, like anyway, a lot of single use plastic items are just like forbidden. And yeah. this is like the part that when I'm just like thinking when I buy a television or when I buy some, I don't know, a new vacuum cleaner or something in the DIY stores, I have a lot of the styrofoam in the packaging. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, yeah. And I never yeah. know what I mean. Now I know that I need to recycle it. But at the end, I also know that it's actually not possible to recycle it. So I'm just like, as the end consumer, I don't know what to do with that part. So I would be really happy if those companies could actually change that part. And what I also wanted to ask, because you said what was also like interesting for me, you said you're not for that, that we are shipping everything back and that we are trying to recycle it. We want to give it back to nature. And what I read is, um, for example, if I order something and I get the packaging, I just like can't break it out and I can put it into my flowers. Is that correct? And it's like, yes, give yes. them more strength and vitamins or something. Absolutely. Yeah. The, uh, the chemical structure of the mycelium is in fact chitin, which is the same material as the, the shell of crabs or little insects. So it's a really strong material, but the, the mycelium has bound together the organic waste, which can be hemp fibers or wood mm -hmm. dust or anything else, which still contains a lot of good nutrients for the soil. So by crumbling it in small pieces, giving it back to the soil, you will really do a good deed for your garden as well. That's a win-win as fuck. I mean, it's, it's so cool. Okay. It is a win-win. Uh, and, and sorry, if I, if I may, if you allow me for a moment. Yes. The, the recycling of, of styrofoam or many other plastics requires that we ship it from your home back to a plant. Yeah. With a product that is so light as styrofoam, 
it's a very expensive and energy absor uh, uh, energy polluting ac activity. So also for that reason, much better to use a compostable or a home compostable product. That's also very important, I think, for the audience to understand compostable doesn't mean home compostable. If there's something like stated biodegradable or compostable, it doesn't mean it's better than plastic. Actually, it's not because it needs to go into specific machinery to biodegrade. And the main point is that we don't have these machines. So we humans are just like having new materials and we think they are more sustainable, but for now they are not because we can't even get rid of them. At the end, they are burned anyway, just to let you know, because I can't stand it that a lot of people say, oh, Oh, but it's biodegradable plastic no it's not better it's actually worse than plastic itself so just like think about it that we really need to go for materials that really are home compostable as um, for example these products um, but Jan we have a lot of questions from the audience I need to read them now because otherwise um, yeah, yeah. Out of time. so the first question is Jan you mentioned the use of mycelium in the building industry and possibility of isolation could you explain or could you uh, could you just like expand this idea could it be possible could there be a possibility to construct buildings from mycelium in the future um, the question is coming from Oliver okay hi Oliver well, the answer to your question is very short, yes. Here I have a mycelium insulation panel that is roughly three centimeters thick. And this one we actually use to insulate buildings. The insulation value of mycelium against, for example, styrofoam is roughly 90% of the value of styrofoam. It means that we have to make our product roughly 10% uh, thicker to come to the same value. But meanwhile, we are also working together with universities to see how we can improve the insulation value of the mycelium. And one of the very simple ideas that some, uh, some professor gave me was, now you are growing this panel with hemp, which is a very heavy and woody material. But if you would work with rice waste, or if you would work with um, cattail, lighter products or cork, already the product would be lighter, there would be more air inside, which would be a more insulating product. Step one. Step two, if you grow this product and leave empty air pockets inside of the panel, air is one of a very, is a very good insulator. So you will make your product lighter and you will make it even more insulating. So we are at just at the beginning of a, a big, let's say product innovation with the help of the intelligence of so many universities that we are going to really change the build, building world and come with uh, bio-based insulation materials. It sounds so exciting. I just like could listen to you all the time. Um, Jan, there is another question, which was actually something that I wanted to ask you as well, because we were talking about first about your cooler behind you, like where you can put your eyes and put your wine inside. And I showed a packaging of the wine as well. And I thought about the crumbling. Um, the question from, uh, from Alejandro <laughs> is, uh, if I understood correctly, Metzelum will crumble and the guest wants it's like the life, life cycle is finished. However, as it comes to the wine cooler that you said, you could be filled up with water and ice. How often I can reuse the wine cooler? Like, can I all the time have it? Like, let's say 20, 30 years, or does it like start to, I don't know, fall apart? <laughs> yes, it will, it, will, it will start to get damaged over time. I use my wine cooler at home now for seven years mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I will take it. So, Meanwhile, these edges here, I have damaged them with my hands or when I put the bottle in, because the material feels a little bit like cork. It's quite strong. Yeah, it does. You can hear this and see it. So it can, it can take a blow, um, but it's not, it's not metal, it's not wood. So uh, from that angle, it's a bit softer, but you can easily put water and ice in here. Um, the, the, it will stay in there. You empty it in the evening and the next day it will be completely dry again. Okay, so the point is just like, if I want to break it down, like if I want it to disappear, I crumble it and put it into the soil to the yes. flowers, correct? But yes. if, I, if I leave it at home, like nothing is going to happen. Is that correct? Like, no, or let's say not, not, not as quickly because oh, actually, I'm not sure if a lot of people have for years wine coolers because many people are... <laughs> 
sorry, lazy, stupid, and just like buy new things. Um, so this is just like, I think it's, it, it, it's awesome. And on the other side, I'm just like thinking about the entire packaging and building industry where we really produce a lot of trash and we could finally get rid of it with such a cool thing. Um, again, more questions um, from Anastasia is the next one. We have an international audience pre present at the Global DIY Network. What are the options of scalability and international production of Metzaldum? And I, this is, uh, Anastasia, it's a perfect, perfect question because I know that Jan, uh, Jan, we can, like every supplier can grow their own parts in their basement. Is that correct? Yes, that's possible because the, uh, the technology uh, using organic waste mixed with mycelium is something that we sell as what we call a GIY kit. So many hobbyists already buy our GIY kits to make products, but companies could even grow their own packaging with our GIY kits. Now I know that this is more, uh, say, uh, uh, a theoretical than a practical story because in the end people will say, I'd rather that you do it because you control the, the, the atmosphere, the climate, much, much better than, uh, than we could do in our cellar. But with our GIY kits, you could really do it. And we already have, have seen that do, done by hundreds and hundreds of people. And Anastasia and all to the other audience as well, um, the company of, of my father, Neuhofer Holz, we are also um, not only like planning the project, but we want to grow our own packaging as it comes to corners and stuff. So we really work on it. And I think that a lot of, a lot of suppliers will actually go into this direction. And, it's very important for me, what is my experience now, what we said before, it's important not to think about only the price, what I have now in hand, but like, what is the entire supply chain price? Like what I really can just like spare as it comes to money. And on the other side, it's not, it doesn't have to be only about the money because it's, it's, it's about our planet and it's like full of trash and we need to stop just like, if we want to still be as we are and behave as we are, at least it's our, actually it's our, yeah, we need to especially like buy other products and, you know, or let's say I, I need to stay as I am and the supplier is, is as he has, but he at least needs to change something as it comes to the trash production. Yes. Yes. To, to like, I don't know, to survive. Let's say it's like, I'm not great at Thunberg uh, and I'm actually annoyed by the, by the entire, the world is going under. But as to, like, the more I read every day and the more I get it, like the information, the more I'm actually scared of, about it, what my consumption is actually doing. Um, to my word and to the future world as well. So Jan, perhaps you can just, I don't know, tell me in two, three seconds, what do you think, like, how is your product really helping out the climate? Like, what is, what is like beneficial for the planet? Yes, well, to do that, I would like to make a short sidestep uh, and share with you the thought I have about, about plastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes I, 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 uh, I tell people, wouldn't it be amazing if we could, uh, uh, make plastic or make oil the same way as we make paper. Because as you know, we have uh, sustainably sustainable forests, the FSC, the, the certification. And in that forest, what they do is they take a plot, they cut it into, or they divide it into 30 plots. They cut all the trees in year one, and then in year two, the next plot and, and so on. And what, guess what? 30 years later, the trees in plot one are grown again. Mm. Now let's do that same thing with oil. So we take all, the oil in the world. The only thing is we don't have to divide it in 30 plots. We have to divide it in 15 million plots because it takes 15 million years to grow one liter of oil. And then I tell people that, and then they tell me, yeah, but that won't work because then the oil will get too expensive. And that's why I keep a long silence and start smiling because that's exactly what we need to understand. Yeah. If we want to use oil sustainably, the price has to be like a thousand times of what it costs today. And if that would happen, and I'm not only promoting my, my material here, but all bio-based materials, these bio-based materials that are launched by so many startups in the world would have had a better chance to, to make a real competitive advantage. Yeah. Now about your question, sorry for this short- <laughs> No, it's really- a, it's Short really uh, topic. Yeah, that part. Um, the way we see, we see that this material will help is first of all, because we can leave the oil in the ground and we can use local waste. That local waste that is now often incinerated with all the CO2 consequences that we know it has. Yeah. Um, that's one thing. Secondly, we can only also do it locally because currently we use hemp from Groningen here in the Netherlands. But 
Now we are shipping to Germany, but hopefully in a while we can start a factory in Germany and use local waste from Germany to bring local packaging to local companies. So local is the word. And the other so word that I am fond of is the word partnerships, because many people ask me, so how do you think to grow your company and how, where do you get the funding from? Well, my thought is much more, if I could find a potential partner in Germany, in France, in, in wherever, maybe we could just do it together. Uh, mm -hmm. It's much easier to grow by sharing than, uh, than to grow by dividing. Sharing is caring. <laughs> So everybody who is listening in out there, just like if you need something, let us know. We will connect you to Jan to make that um, part possible. And on the other side, um, Jan, we have more questions, but I would have my own thousand questions, but I need to go for it for the other ones first. Um, Sabina Stang asks, I would like to know more about how it is carbon negative. It is carbon sink then, like, is it like carbon neutral or let's say surplus and how carbon how carbon negative is it like did you understand it like if it is it like you that question I, I was hoping it was uh, going to be asked oh yeah. so, here we go because many people think that growing this thing will actually absorb uh, uh, co2 it won't mm -hmm. so our process what happens here in this factory I will show you later is still a co2 emitting activity however, it is so much more efficient than the traditional, let's say, machinery-based system that in the end, we still have saved CO2. Let me give you a, an example in numbers. We work a lot with hemp. Hemp, growing here in, uh, in uh, the north part of the country, sequesters three kilos of CO2 per kilo of hemp. Three kilos of CO2 for one kilo of hemp. Now we're going to cut that hemp, ship it to my factory, I'm going to mix some mycelium through it, put it in a mold and ship it to one customer 250 kilometers away from me. If I do that, that process will cost me 1.3 kilos of CO2 per kilo of mycelium, which means that if I start with three, I lose 1.3. At the end, there is still 1.7 kilos of CO2 in each kilo of mycelium products. That's how it sequesters CO2. So our process, the activity of the mushroom is actually producing CO2, but in a such efficient way that in the end it is still a, a carbon sink. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end, and as you know, the entire figures that you have here, you can also like cooperate with companies like My Climate and just like to say you're going CO2 neutral because you're actually giving a lot of back. Is that correct? Like, it's not That's like- correct. The yes, numbers yeah. are not as high as, as the traditional manufacturing, so it's not it will not be that expensive, <laughs> let's say. That's correct. That's correct. Yes. So, well, but it's good that you're like open talk talking about it because mainly like companies are trying to greenwash and say they are totally CO2 neutral, which means I, I'm sorry for my for my language, but they don't give a shit about sustainability. They are producing as they were ever like as they have been till now, and then they are just like I don't know, spending fifty thousand euros to grow some trees and say that they are CO two neutral, which is yeah. actually pretty yeah. annoying me. Um, so as I said, I, I really love everything what you are doing. Perhaps you want to I don't know. Perhaps you want to explain me what you think how the future will look like in some years or. What, what else do you want to do with your company? What, what, is your, what are your next innovative steps? Yes. Well, so uh, as Grown Bio, well, literally the name of our company says what we want to do, which is to grow based on, bio, on the bio-based economy. Uh, and our focus will be interior objects. You also see a lamp behind me there, over there. Yep. Um, Packaging project, products, but also uh, 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 building and construction materials. Mm -hmm. In the same field of mycelium, there's many more activities. There is already another company in the Netherlands that makes coffins made of mycelium. Yeah. Um, we have also the, the Ecovative, the, the company that I have the license from, has also created leather made, made from mycelium. And recently, a year ago, they have launched the first edible uh, or meat, meat replacer by mycelium. So sometimes I say, if you compare the development of mycelium with the development of a car, and let's just say that a car was invented in 1900s. Today in cars, we are in 2021, our cars are self-driving, we can talk to them, yeah. we can, we, they can nav navigate themselves to anywhere. 
but mycelium is still in 1910. And imagine what happens if we just catch up with that uh, and just speed up what we need to do in the last hundred years. So mycelium is going to, well, really change the world. I mean, there's already um, evidence that mycelium underground is actually doing much more uh, than just growing and binding the soil. Let me give you an example. We have one tree here and the mycelium around the roots of that tree is in contact with that tree. Now, suppose that tree gets a sickness that the mycelium underground detects that sickness and starts giving stress signals to the other trees around the tree to say, start defending yourself because that tree is sick. This is already no knowledge that we now have. There's much more I could tell you about mycelium. It's really an amazing story. So buy all the books you can find about mycelium. It's really going to change this world. <laughs> I just want to, you know, I'm a wood engineer and I was actually studying everything about wood and nobody told me that the mycelium is actually like trying to find the sickness of the tree, which is pretty sad. I'm going to tell that my teachers <laughs> and I worked <laughs> five years. So, yeah. so yeah. Sometimes called the internet of the forest because it signals between, uh, between trees or between plants or between organisms. And even when you walk on the forest floor, the pressure of your body, of your feet will give signals and give a reaction to the uh, to the mycelium. Mm -hmm. Very cool, Jan. I have. I think I will give you just like the last question because we are almost at forty minutes. Um, Jan, just a sh short summer. Like, if we summarize everything, if I want to grow my own packaging or if I want to grow something by myself for my company, how should I go forward? Well, if you want to grow something, just reach out to me, and we can help you working on a design, working on a prototype growing the material for you or making sure you have the mycelium, the substrate as we call it, uh, and grow something yourself. Um, maybe I could just turn my camera around for a moment so that I can show you the factory, uh, what we do here. So, because I am actually standing here on top of our big oven. We have a huge oven, 60 cubic meters below me. The wooden floor is the roof of my oven. But when I turn around, you see the factory behind me. There's many different molds. By, behind there is a blue machine that is our auto filler. It's a robot filler. So we now fill our molds by robots. On the right side of the factory or on the left side, uh, we have two large growth chambers. And in both of these chambers, we mimic autumn. We mimic the, the period of the year where mushrooms really grow, where the growth of the mycelium is the quickest. And as I said, below me is uh, the oven where we dehydrate the material and where the products get ready. And if, you, uh, and if you want us to do it for you, we can. If you want just to use the mycelium, call me and we'll get you some. Jan, are you getting high because of the entire <laughs> dust there? I'm sorry, I need to ask that. I'm <laughs> uh, there's many people who think, oh, a Dutch guy with mushrooms. There must be something <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> But no, we are doing more boring stuff with mushrooms than people think. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. Um, Jan, I, sorry, another question from the audience. I need to ask it, um, which is actually a pretty cool one because you said you are going more into the interior design correctly. Um, can you make furniture from that material? And Cor um, Carolina is actually asking, how does it smell? I want to, I want to tell you how it, uh, how, how it smells. I. I can't actually, <laughs> I can't explain it how, because it's a totally new yeah. smell, but it's, but it's really but, like, uh, I, I, I like it. Like difficult it, to say it's because the smell, like, yeah. it's very light. So it's not like totally aggressive or something. It's no, it's a bit earthy smell. Yeah. Uh, uh, but also the smell of the hemp waste is still in there. Uh, when you just buy your product, it will smell a bit stronger and over time, it will disappear because you will have noticed, Victoria, that the smell has decreased in the weeks that you have that product. Yep, and I had a lot of samples in my flat. <laughs> I was like walking in in a mid -salum. <laughs> You well, asked yeah. me about furniture, so I uh, just quickly showed you, well, here you see a chair that we made of mycelium, beautiful upholstered by a Belgian artist. Uh, there's a little table behind me, and you see also an urn. So we make so many different things. 
the okay. earn part is very yeah. interesting i know a lot of startups that are actually going into this direction to make like our soil even better because when we die they are putting us in plastic stuff yeah. which is not disappearing not so um this is a really cool part as well i will contact you about that uh, later another question jan you're like everybody loves you <laughs> How feasible is it to consider this type of packaging for DIY products such as paint, sealants, and several chemical components? And uh, this question comes from Thierry. Okay, well, hi there. And I can answer your question by just pointing over my shoulder where you see two objects just painted. Of course, we use a bio-based paint, which is a paint uh, I think the question was like how to store the part, like can you use this material to store the chemicals and to store the paint? Ah, good, sorry, okay, yeah. So um, the, our, our packaging or our products can be used to store packed products. So this material is not yet food, uh, food contact tested. So mm -hmm. for example, when people ask me, can you, put, can you put a day cream or a night cream in your mycelium? That's not yet possible because we simply have not done that test yet. Mm -hmm. We know that when we mix mycelium and organic waste together, the organic waste will be sterilized. And mycelium is a product of nature. So there won't be much, let's say, bad constituents in the product. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I mean, it's still tons and tons of hemp that we use. So there may be stuff in there. Um, and in order to put food stuff or creams, facial creams in a mycelium product, you need some really strict testing. And for that reason, we only do what we call secondary packaging. Mm -hmm. But I know companies that are actually making from hemp, like a new kind of, let's say, plastic for extrusion for typical machinery, like they are making those small bubbles to, to make what we have been making from plastic from hemp. Perhaps it is possible to make like the combination that the out, outer part of that is still like the mid salon, but the inside part will be, for example, based on coffee grains or based on hemp grains, like like a typical, like, I, you mean I as, a, as a plastic replacing coating. But on home compostable parts and outside is like the other parts, like two components in one. Is that, could be that, like, could that be possible? Yes, that could be imaginable. Um, uh, we, we use coatings to protect the products, which means that with that coating, if that coating is food proof, you can literally put food stuff in there but that would require the coating that I don't know, but maybe some of the people in the audience do know. And uh, let's find out, let's work together and see if we can do something for uh, like that. I just, I just wrote down the company that I really want to introduce you because they are doing what you said. Um, perhaps you're gonna be a perfect fit. So um, to all the others, um, there are some more questions, but um, I, um, I believe we, we had enough for the first taste. If there is anything else that you want to know, um, just write me a message, write me a, um, I don't know, uh, Instagram message, Facebook, or on our email. Uh, Inaki will be perhaps also very nice to send the email through. And um, Jan, I thank you so much that you introduced your super awesome, the awesome <laughs> company. And I, as I said, I'm a to speak with you guys. And it was fun to speak with you as well. So thank and you, Victoria. I feel your love um, to do something better and cooler, which is uh, exactly what, what I stand for. So thank you for your time. And I hope to see you, especially the next year on the DIY Summit to perhaps- I'm sure uh, we will meet then. I'm sure we will meet there. Instead of the digital one, a physical meeting. Yeah, it's horrible. I, I really need the love back. <laughs> I need some people around me. <laughs> Okay, Jan, have Thank a good one. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Thank you so much. And to all the others, I hope you really enjoyed it because I did. And I, I just can tell you, I have so many companies that I want to introduce you. Uh, and I hope I will get the chance uh, on the summit or at the live podcast. What I really want to tell you is, um, please do not forget to register for the virtual DIY summit, which will take place from the 9th to the 10th of September. You can already um, buy the tickets there, of course. And we have really two cool key speeches. Um, the first one is the CEO of Kingfisher. I, I'm sorry, I cannot like really spell it in French, but I think it's Thierry Gurnier. 
or something. I'm sorry for that. And also uh, from Hornbach, uh, Erich Harsch will, will have a speech there. So make sure to get your place and see you there, even if it's not in person. I, th I, I really hope it's going to be the last time that we are seeing us online. But please, like, let's stay in touch, at least in a virtual kind of way, uh, to not lose the connection. And there is a possibility to have one-on-one -on -one meetings. There will be group um, talks. So we especially can just like feel a little bit of us. And um, the next year we're going to see us in person and I can't wait for it. Until then, if you have any kind of questions, just let me know and have a good one. Enjoy your week and stay sustainable. <laughs> Bye.